Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Today we are the 14th of November 2023. Uh, around the virtual table, you have myself, Damien Duportel, <coughs> Hervé Lemur, Stéphane Merle, and Kevin Martins. Let's get started with the weekly release 2.432. So the war and the packages are out. Uh, so the release is, uh, looks good. Kevin, can you confirm that the changelog is uh, released? Uh, the changelog has not been merged yet, Damon, but I can take care of that in just a second. Okay. Almost merged. War packages and Docker image. So something new on the chun, uh, on that version is that now we provide Windows container images for controller with TDK 17 and a bunch of new tags. So great work, Hervé. Looks like it worked really well. Um, looks like you've added additional release note on the Docker image part. I believe we can communicate on this uh, also on the official change log now. Yeah, Another. Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Uh, another breaking change is that we have removed the CentOS 7 container image as that operating system is long deprecated. So for the Docker images, it has been removed. Is there any question or comment on the weekly release? Okay, so that means we can proceed for weekly dot CI and then for dot CI. On the announcements, <clears throat> we have an LTS tomorrow. Oh, uh, so don't break the infrastructure tomorrow, please, folks. Uh, the LTS Windows container images uh, let me additional release note. Oh, sorry, I removed the additional. Oh, sorry, it's out for me. Is part of the game. Uh, container CentOS 7 removal as well, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's all. I don't have other announcement. Do you have some folks? Nope, okay, so let's continue with the upcoming calendar. <clears throat> Next week, 21 November, we'll have a new weekly as usual. Tomorrow, the LTS 2.426.1. Uh, Mark White is the release lead. So if you have any question, uh, please check with Mark, who will coordinate every, uh, every element of the checklist. Um, any questions so far? Let's check on the mailing list for the Jenkins advisory. And we don't have advisory announced publicly. So none. And remember, uh, a reminder of the next major event where you could cross path with uh, Jenkins contributors. We'll have DevOps World London the 5th December 2023. And the first week of February, it will be, I believe it's 2 and 3 February in Brussels. We will have the FOSDEM. So some of us should be there on that are, uh, on that moment. So don't hesitate to to it's come and just three and four. Three and four. Yeah. Thanks. I believe uh, the two will be uh, second will be a Jenkins contributor summit in Brussels prior and to the FOSDEM. Friday, I think. Yes. Ah, okay. Today I can type properly. Other major events, comments, or can we proceed to the operational tasks? Nope. Okay, so let's go. Uh, step one, the task we were able to finish during the past milestone. Um, first of all, oh, oh, it's not in the same order. I will take them on the notes order. No priority here. Um, 
we detected that CI agent Kinsayo wasn't able to spin up ephemeral agent uh, when the VM were Linux RM64 machines. So we fixed that earlier today with the help of Stefan. The, we saw that despite the official specifications on Azure website, uh, the machines here cannot ask for more than uh, 100 gigabyte for their disk when we use an ephemeral disk. It's due to a missing feature in the Azure VM plugin uh, where there are two kinds of OS disk placement. Either the ephemeral disk requested when creating the machine can be a system disk with everything within. That's what we have by default for Windows machines when asking for ephemeral storage. But in the case of Linux IRM64 agent on that particular hardware, we have limits. So theoretically, we could add either 150 gigabyte of temp storage, but the ephemeral storage allocated for the system is limited to 100 gigabytes. And the Jenkins plugin only allows us to specify for the OS disk. So in the particular case of IRM64, that's what happened. Um, so we've decreased the size of 100 gigabyte, and that was also <clears throat> an opportunity for us to decrease cost because not because we decrease the size of the disk, we don't pay for ephemeral disks. However, we detected that trusted CI Windows VMs and infra CI, every kind of VM agents weren't using ephemeral operating system. So that means we were paying for disk while we had the local NVMe storage. So we have changed this. Uh, that's not a lot, but still we can expect one to $200 uh, of, uh, uh, of savings monthly uh, due to that. So thanks for the help. Any question on this topic? Please note that by using the same kind of instance everywhere, the probability to hit the Azure quota for that specific part of instance has increased. I will um, show you why we didn't work on the quota because we will have to work on the new Azure subscription that will take care of that part. So no worries on this one, but worth mentioning it just in case we hit the quota earlier than expected. Um, I've closed the issue about pull requests uh, when merge on the Jenkins core on CI Jenkins IO continue building. Uh, it's hard to reproduce and we weren't able to get a reproduction case but most probably that could have been um, caused by the fact that the garbage collecting, so the mechanism that detects that a, a given pull request or so pipeline job on a multi-branch pipeline need to be deleted. That part, when used with AWS S3 artifacts, uh, can tend to delay the moment where Jenkins start to delete the builds. M that could absolutely map to what uh, Alex described, meaning 10 to 15 minute time for the system to pass and clean up the builds. So you have to wait 10 to 15 minutes for the build to be aborted as per the, the settings that we have automatically. Another uh, working angle is that maybe we have hit the GitHub uh, rate limit that will also have the same symptoms because when you merge the pull request, there is a webhook on Jenkins and Jenkins starts scanning the repository. If it hits the GitHub rate limit API, then it will wait until the threshold is, uh, is increased again, waiting for before deleting because it cannot watch and see the deletion of the reference. I've closed uh, because not able to reproduce. Of course, we can reopen at any moment if we have a way to reproduce or see it in action. Is there any question on this topic? Okay, next issue. Uh, mirror status link from get Jenkins IO return 404 error. So in fact, the status HTML file uh, was only present on two locations, on get Jenkins IO reference file system, and also on archive Jenkins IO. That file was a leftover of the former mirror system named Mirror Brain. It was using a mechanism named Mirror Mon, which was used to monitor all the mirrors of a given Mirror Brain instance. 
alas, that monitoring does not exist with mirror bits. So that was a really a more than three year old file. So I remove it, I've re removed it and updated the index HTML so that the link is not shown anymore, avoiding the error. So you can see the fourth bullet has disappeared and the weekly release with all the, the changes did not made it reappear. It means that file is alone here. We don't know where it's generated, but it's clearly not generated by the core releases. So problem solved. Questions. Um, how did you in, uh, edit the index? Uh, I connect it to the get Jenkins IO, uh, uh, one of the container in the cluster. Uh, mirror bits has the read and write, while Apache doesn't. So I went on the mirror bits because mirror bits is scanning that file system as a reference. So I went there, I changed the file and done. Okay, this isn't uh, some uh, generated content? No, as I said two minutes ago, no. So, uh, otherwise okay. we would have seen it updated and I wasn't able to find a template. Maybe it's generated by something, but that something is hidden somewhere, cron tab or an hidden script. And second questions, um, how about putting a link to statist.jenkins.io? Sorry, your son was cut, so I Sorry, didn't uh, hear what How about said. putting a link to statist.jenkins.io in that place? Um, the goal of that page was to show a status of the mirrors. That's not what statist.jenkins.io does, so that's why. Does it make sense? Yeah, not exactly, but if we notice the problem and accident can't be on the status of Jenkins IO, so it would be better than nothing, not really the status of mirror, but yeah. I, again I disagree yeah. because the the title was mirror status. That was literally the title of the link. Yeah. And we don't have a way to monitor our mirrors today. So unless we had a dashboard on status Jenkins IO with a specific sub page, in that case, it will make sense. But here, I don't see the, the need for, for that here. That was something really old. So just to avoid people trying to check mirror status. That yeah. page should disappear on long term. But that's different things. Status Jenkins IO is about the platform. The status HTML here is about the monitoring the mirrors, which are two different things for end users at least. Does it answer your question or do I have a sound problem? No. Um, <clears throat> Mark mentioned that that page could move to Jenkins IO in the future. That could be another solution by removing the index HTML page and um, uh, adding a HTTP redirect to Jenkins IO somewhere where we would have a page that will say, hey, here has the thing. And that will be a proper way to, to have a link to status Jenkins IO. Right now, editing an index HTML file which is not generated makes me really scared. Any question? No. Thanks. Next topic. Oh, sorry. No, no thanks. Okay. Uh, next uh, task that was quite the task. We were able to finish the upgrade of Kubernetes 1.26. We can start working on or thinking working on 1.27. Um, one of the major elements here, um, uh, compared to last week. Uh, so we had to move resources because we were stuck on Azure because the locks we added on the public IP during the previous upgrade were preventing Kubernetes to upgrade. That was a immediate and fast uh, failure. So during, for private gates, we experimented removing, deleting the locks, upgrading the cluster and letting um, Terraform recreate the lock. But then we realized with Stefan and then Hervé that yeah, that might not be the long term. With the notes that Hervé and team put on the previous upgrade, we were able to understand better the solution to move the public IP to another resource group where we can have the lock without preventing 
the cluster to upgrade or manage its resources. It's just changing the resource groups. One with the resource we manage and that we eventually lock, and one that the cluster IKS manage by itself. Upgrading the cluster means being able to not having that second resource group locked. So the good news is that moving public IP from one resource group to another does not shut down the service and doesn't change the public IP. Yay for us. So we were able to move these public IPs and then perform the upgrade. Only tiny feedback. When you move as your resources from one resource group to another, you have to wait. And yeah, that, that, was the, that was the part the more difficult for Damien to, to be patient on that. I remember. I tried to move the free public IPs at the same time. And yeah, let's say the system is eventually consistent. No, no. They lock the destination uh, resource group. So if, if one operation is on it, it it's locked. So of course, it, it's consistent then, one by one. Yeah, and then it waited 10 minutes each before telling us in the middle of an upgrade. Yeah. Uh, and we also had to update annotation. Uh, so these annotations are recent in the Kubernetes AKS history. On the service of type load balancer on Kubernetes, we, uh, we now can specify the resource group and the public IP name instead of specifying the IPv4 or IPv6. That's way more efficient and recommended by Microsoft. Because in the controller, instead of having to search, hey, I got that IP, let's search a resource with that IP associated. You have one level of indirection here. It directly say, oh, the resource is there. Let's use it. That's way more efficient. And that avoids confusion regarding two IP, one V4 and V6 for the same load balancer, which is not what we do. So yeah, that's all. Any question? The logo is nice. Thanks, Hervé, for being the guardian of the proper logo. <laughs> Any question? No. Okay, work in progress by order of priority. <laughs> Update center. Uh, Hervé, are you okay to report or do you want me to do it for this one? Mm, I can report on the other part. Yeah. But, yeah. Let, let's proceed. Um, so the crawler uh, job is uh, not a freestyle one. So we can use a uh, credential in the Jenkins file. We had to add a uh, AZ uh, copy to Linux provisioning. To get uh, to to be able to use it in the Linux agent used by the job, not the permanent agent of trusted. The pull request is ready with the synchronization of uh, the update folder content uh, generated by this crawler job uh, into the bucket and file fair, like it's done. Uh, in the update folder in on the PKZ virtual machine uh, uh, hosting uh, update.jenkins.io. We have to try it before merging it, and then we'll be able to to yeah uh, to continue on the on the process. Okay, so that means we need to pair on this one. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, Stefan, is that okay for you? Since you were uh, yes, you were the last one working on that part, except last Thursday, Friday, and yesterday before you were off. Okay. Um, so I'm removing Stefan and adding back Hervé. It's on ending over every two weeks. Um, on my side, I've started working on fine tuning the ingress. It's it's related to the topic we had about the status HTML file because both uh, mirror bits tries to serve some files, but what about the, what's the difference between index.html and whatever file.html that we have? In the case of the update center, it looks like that every HTML, JSON, and TXT file should be served by the mirrors because they are copied 
by the, the Earthing AWS or AZ copy to the mirrors. Only exception, HT access files, of course, because it's not an URL. It's only an internal of Apache not visible to the end user. So we don't have to care for this one, except not copying these files on the mirrors. And we have the slash index HTML page that you can see on Azure Update Jenkins. That page is the only HTML file not copied to the mirrors. I believe that that page should also move to Jenkins IO at a moment on time. And that page is generated by the update center with template, HTML templating. So the next steps now will be to fine tune the ingress to send everything to mirror bits when it ends with HTML JSON or TXT extension, except for the slash index HTML, of course, and the slash. Is there any question on this? Does it make sense? It makes sense, mm -hmm. yes. So as written, the next step for us will be once crawler and fine tuning ingress will be done by Arvan High, both of us will have to do functional tests on Azure Update Jenkins IO. So we will trigger manually one update of the update center. The goal for us is to spin up ephemeral controller and connect them and try to build Docker image with the Jenkins plugin CLI to use that update center instead of the default one. If functionally it work, we will have to work on the update center to pull request that Hervé started uh, to be sure that we have a review by Daniel Beck and that we can have it in production to keep our mirrors updated. Once these two are finished, then we can work on, in parallel, writing a GEP to explain and show our POC and what are the pros and cons and why did we ended up with that technical solution that will act as a reference guide and a bit of performance testing to be sure we understand what are the limits of the system. Any question? No. Okay, so Hervé, both you and Hi, this is, we'll work on this on the next milestone. Is that okay for you? Yes. Okay, and that will be the top priority of the world team. Thanks, uh, next topic. IRM64, what's the status RV and can you report to Andover to Stefan for the next milestone? Um, the last item of the list from the main command from Stefan, uh, you can click it, uh, there is a link in the uh, issue body. Uh, the last two, uh, yeah, this one. No, it's this. Uh, postponed for now. Plugin site issue. Uh, the image was uh, the build uh, was stuck. I restarted the uh, build and the image is now ready. Uh, plugin site the backend plugin site API. API. I've made uh, I've moved the build process from trusted uh, to infra CI and uh, added uh, an ARM sixty four image. Uh, the chart is updated, and now we can proceed to the migration and of plugin site component. As plugin site issue is a component of plugin site too. For me, at least. Okay. So awesome. next, next will be so announcing the uh, migration, doing them. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be any issue. I've tested the plugin site API on my Apple Silicon with ARM64 and uh, retrieved the uh, categories from my localhost, so everything looks good. And uh, the next will be so uh, announcing this, migrate them. And finally, we can uh, migrate weekly.ci.jenkins.io controller to ARM64. This will be, I think, all for this first migration uh, part. Cool, nice work. 
So is that okay for both of you to take care of the deployment either in pairing or let Stefan uh, validate the pull request and follow up so that will act as an handover and so you can focus on the crawler? Is that okay for you, Hervé? Yes, sure. Stefan, are you up to the challenge? Oh, yes, perfect. We did all so that, the work. Okay, so that means in order to close that issue, we have three services to migrate to RM64. And then you are done. Most of the work has been done. It's mostly Elm chart, Kubernetes management, and following deployments. Okay, so I'm assigning the issue to Stefan. Stefan, you will have to plan uh, the the date and open uh, status Jenkins IO. Uh, that there should be no incident. However, we never know. Yes, I learned that. <laughs> I'm wondering you if you could even announce the plugin site component migration or other tones if you them. Yep, makes sense. I didn't get that, sorry. Plugin site issue is an API which is running on the cluster but is used only by plugin site. So this the three remaining service to migrate <coughs> are the plugin site front end, the plugin site API is back end and plug it site issue. I think you can announce the migration of the three of them in a single announcement. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, folks. Um, I propose, Stefan, then <clears throat> we will work. Uh, once this is done, we will start uh, writing a new issue for the next RM64 migration, which aren't part of the public gates part. Either you do it on your own, or if you want, we can uh, co-write this in pairing. Yes. Great. So the definition of done will be having a new issue for the next steps that we can add on not this week milestone, but next week. Okay for you? Yes, perfect. Cool, thanks. Hervé, your turn. Start a new repository under Jenkins and Fra for the Jenkins Contributor Spotlight. Can you give us not a, a not a, no really news since last week except I'll prioritize this issue a bit more this week. Okay. Oh yes, um, one thing I have added branch protection on the main branch, so pull requests require uh, a review now or be able to be merged. Been merged. Cool, thanks. C can you just not forget to add a comment yeah. just to be sure that it's written here because I saw the messages in IRC. Uh, and, I wanted yeah. to add it in the issue later when I will add the status procurement check. But yeah, I can add it in the issue right now. Yep, just to be sure we don't forget to uh, to trace this. Okay, I've uh, added the issue to the next milestone. Now, Stefan, your turn. Uh, the work on the Packer image, so the all-in-one templates, particularly focused on the GOS test harness. Can you report with us? What's yes, I'm. I'm on the on the go right now to move all the uh, rest, all the not rest. Sorry, I'm missing the English word. Remaining. The remaining, thank you, Damien. The remaining check that are uh, sanity check that are right now in the shell script they are moving right now in the GOS file, uh, either with the version or at least with the error code zero um, and the, on, on, on the tools that we don't um, stick on the, on the version. And, uh, and the next step will be probably this afternoon or tomorrow morning to uh, update all the update CLI to keep tracking on those ghost files. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, it's in a good way, I think. And uh, the next step would be the factorization on the ghost file to have one for Linux, one for Windows, and one for the common tools. And that's all. So I believe you will continue working on this next milestone? Yes, please. Okay. May I, I ask you after this meeting to report a comment on the issue, mm -hmm. just to describe what has been done since the last comment, even if it's um, 
a summary of the issue here. Even if you didn't do all the, the work here, since as Hervé mentioned, we had to install a Z copy and we had to ponder with your work, but still just a summary. What has been done, was what is being done, so work in progress and what need to be done, but you just said it early. That will act for uh, uh, as an audit work log for us. Is that okay for you? Yes, of course. Thanks. You will be the first one uh, being helped by writing this. I know. I know. Okay, next issue, Chinese websites. So that's a topic for Mark, Kevin, and Hai. Uh, I need to find a way to add Kevin here. Uh, sorry, because I can't. I can't find a way to assign you, but we know we are, you're there. So we did a I, meeting last week um, about that topic. So I believe Mark and Kevin, you should be autonomous on that part, unless you ask us for help. Uh, is that correct on the high level status? Yes. Cool. Um, so Kevin, can you just give us a quick summary on uh, what's What's the further about on that issue? Just to share uh, knowledge with Stefan and Hervé. Yeah, so um, so we uh, Mark and I met with Damien now. I met twice, uh, three of us together once. Uh, Damien's explained kind of the structure and back end of it so that we know uh, or we understand kind of where all of this is coming from and where it's being directed. And um, we've gone over the ingress setup and uh, how everything's being directed in that sense. And we've gone over possible solutions to this and how they can be combined. Uh, so uh, at this point, Mark and I uh, have been going through and uh, I've been installing the K3D and trying to get the Helm chart stuff working so that I can uh, do that end of it and test that. Um, and then, yeah, th at this point, we're trying to get that all squared away so that we can determine what the best selection of options are to resolve this. So uh, Potential, uh, rewriting rewriting the path seems like a really solid option. Um, we can also remove uh, the uh, the direction that it's getting in the first place. So um, some kind of a combination of these things will most likely happen, uh, but we just gotta get to that point. Cool, thanks. Same as what I asked as Stefan and Hervé, once you will reach a status where you have a global view of the different solution and eventually select one, May I ask you to add a comment on that issue to describe the what before we jump to implementation? The goal is to have a self audit log for you at first and for the team, because in six months, when all of us will look, why did we do things like that? We will have an audit log on that issue. Does it make sense? And is that okay for you? Yeah, no problem at all. I can definitely put some more info in there. I. Uh just saw that so that's uh that, that didn't come across in mine and so sorry about that missed it okay i'll do it no, now no no problem there weren't any expectations uh that's a kind of exercise that we are trying to put in place the three of us so just for the sake of yeah sharing knowledge here is that okay, okay for you don't worry it's hard for everyone except damien who's doing that quite well but it's hard for everyone but that's awesome yeah no worries thanks so I'm adding this to the next milestone. Is that OK for everyone? Thanks for the report. Uh, two new issues that landed on that milestone. The first one, updates Jenkins IO is not accessible via IPv6, which is true. The current virtual machine doesn't have any IPv6 uh, network address. Uh, as I said on the message, we could we are waiting for um, for the migration the the update center work to the mirrors which will which already has ipv6 so the proposal here is that we don't spend time on trying to tangle with the existing virtual machine adding a new network interface rebooting it setting it up and eventually break network for a few minutes uh, compared to the effort of let's focus on migrating to the new system and we won't have to care anymore. Is that okay for everyone that we don't do short-term solution and we had this to the backlog? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm removing the milestone here. On my, yeah. Sorry? 
I was about to say we can comment on this issue to make a yeah you are already okay. Yep, already done. <laughs> and finally, uh, Zbinek reported failures on infra CI and only on pull request in infra CI for um, the plugin website with the following error message. That failure doesn't happen on CI Jenkins IO, which uses a different Jenkins file and different environment for the builds. And it doesn't happen on the master branch on infra CI. So they just we just have a few changes between the master and the pull request, but I don't understand the problem. I try to check the Gatsby GS documentation and I need help. I don't want to spend any more minutes on that technical stack. Uh, nothing makes sense. I don't understand anything and not at ease with that part. So I need help to understand why the heck is that thing trying to write on a non-user repository that makes no sense for me. The documentation says it should everything should be done on dot cache at the root of the repository. So I don't understand that tentative copy. That could be a plugins or something outside the Gatsby scope, but I don't know. So any help here is we're very welcome. Uh, on short term, one solution could be to unblock our friend working on that port because they might not want to spend too much time. Uh, it will be to merge the Jenkins files used between infra CI and CI Jenkins IO on a single one. So we will always have the same method. Advantage on short term, it will unblock them. If it work on CI Jenkins IO, that will work the same on infra. We have the same machines. The problem with this is that they use Docker container, Node.js Docker container to run the steps within instead of reusing the Node.js version we have. So that means that will be one step back from the all-in-one without uh, running virtual machine. Today on infra CI, we build inside con Linux containers. That means we will have to use virtual machine for this. The rate of build and pull request is less than 10 or 15 per quarter. So that's okay in terms of billing. It's just that it will be a bit slower. So my proposal is that I want to wait until we have finished the LTS. If we don't have feedback from Alex, Binek, or uh, Gavin, then we will merge to unblock them. Is that okay for everyone? Unless someone wants to deep dive on this. Okay. So I'm removing myself here for now, and I'm adding it to the next milestone because that's a real life problem blocking them to deliver new features to plugin Jenkins IE website. Any question? No question for me. Cool, so we can close the milestone. Now, do we have new issues? Um, Mark, you open a new issue about snake YAML statistics. Mm -hmm. Can you right. give us a summary and should we, are the action expected from us? Yeah, I think this one, it's probably best to just assign it to me. Thanks to the work of Zbinek Konechny, he's identified the root problem and the root problem, I think is, so you can also clear the triage. Um, the root problem is that the version string used by the Snake Camel API plugin embeds a dash. And that dash is needs to be relevant, but we use dash in many other places to indicate the end of relevancy of the uh, content of the version string. Oops. And therefore this, this choice to do it with, oh, it's still relevant after the dash means something different. So we've got, I, I need to work this and I suspect it's I'll need to work it with the maintainers of the snake ammo plugin just to propose, could we use a slightly different version number sequence on this plugin instead of a dash, we'll use another character. And, and it just, <laughs> thanks to Spinek for look, doing the, uh, doing the, the detailed look at what's going on because he then proposed a fix. But then when he proposed a fix, it tainted every other plugin statistics with things that were completely unrelated. So it's like, oh, 
very obvious way. Fix the problem, show that the fix is disastrous, and then we take the fix out again. <laughs> Fair. Any question on that topic or clarification? <laughs> yes, I, I love Hervé's uh, idea. Please don't be shy. <laughs> Explain why you want an emoji instead of a dash as a separator. <laughs> so we tried uh, taking uh, so tag with emoji and it works correctly and GitHub is accepting them. So yes, you could eventually tag. use okay. an emoji as a separator for better release. <laughs> Hervé, Hervé, there's a part of me that says you're a terrible person for even suggesting <laughs> such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> that, that you should, you should, you should reconsider your life choices for having suggested <laughs> such a thing. Again, and again we we... the parser for that and see <laughs> size of the character and yeah, everything else with that. Two types of person on the world, people who know how to parse Unicode characters and the buffer overflow error. <laughs> okay, so I've uh, assigned Mark to that issue <laughs> and um, I did the milestone. So we can continue looking on the new issues. I've created three new ones that are already part of the new milestone. Um, so the first one is and will be uh, important. We have checked and double checked with Stefan earlier today, the amount of credit left on DigitalOcean. Initially, we wanted to check the outbound bandwidth consumption uh, that Archive Jenkins IO and uh, the builds we run on DigitalOcean are consuming. <clears throat> and we have almost two months left on credit with the current rate, which is a good news. But that means we need to contact DigitalOcean as soon as possible to first summarize what we did, what how did we use their service, because they asked us, particularly mentioning that we moved our Kubernetes to high availability controller and that we started using their outbound bandwidth with archive Jenkins IO. Uh, and then ask for them to continue, renew, eventually increase or decrease the sponsor. Uh, so for us, that's that means a bit of preparatory work for an email. I will ask you for a review before sending it. And if they decline or they don't want to continue with us, that means we will have to prepare for closing everything in December and find solution to us these services. Is there any question on this topic? Oh, thank you for doing that. And sincere thanks to DigitalOcean for their contribution. They've been, it's been an amazing journey. I hope they will renew for us. I really do. I, I think there, there's no reason they shouldn't renew for us, but if they were not to, we still should be deeply grateful for what they've done for us. They have been amazing. Absolutely. And just for the sake of numbers, uh, we saw how much gigabytes are going out from the world digital lesson platform that we use. We don't know which, uh, how is the repartition between Archive Jenkins IO and our builds, which send data to CI Jenkins IO or AWS. However, that's a nice uh, 20 to 21 terabytes per month outgoing. Oh, I was about to say not gigabyte, terabyte. But yes, <laughs> exactly. The, terabyte. To see if you were following. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot of data. Um, and I that's, believe, and uh, that's included in the in the droplet billing. So it's awesome. I mean, even exactly. for, the, for other clients, it's it's really great. So that's for yeah. It's because they allow us. Yeah. Oh. And fifty terabytes of data transfer per month. Free for free. That's awesome. really nice. I'm wondering if they adapt this limit to our yeah. consumption, I think. Yeah. Yes, by default, it's a 500 gigabyte outgoing per month for free, and then you pay 0 0.01. But in that case, they yeah they are enabled nothing. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the open source sponsorship program, or is it because the outbound bandwidth measurement and payment is uh, from this year and they want to uh, to have it in beta for some users? Not sure why. But it's a good thing for us. 
Uh, second new issue. Uh, we have for we have a, a few credits that has been given by Azure uh, for a sponsor, and after a long discussion with the Jenkins board, we have confirmed that it's too risky uh, to pay the current Azure bills with these credits because that will involve changing some legal terms and also migrating subscription to one kind of another. Technically, they say it's okay. But that means reconfiguring everything related to Azure Active Directory and TRA. So every tokens, every credentials of technical users, every permission need to be redone. Uh, they might also have some un, uh, hidden risk on the storage account. So my proposal to the board has been to not use the credits for paying, but now we have to start immediately working on moving the ephemeral workloads to a new a secondary subscription that will be paid with these credits. So I've put a few ideas right now. We have two to, to start with, ATH and BOM builds. ATH, because right now it's running virtual machines inside a inside Azure, that's not a lot of money, but that will allow us to split the usual build plugins from the ATH virtual machine. So we could have an exact cost of how much ATH costs. And proposal is to BOM, to run an experiment where the BOM builds are run inside virtual machine instead of container today. Eventually, we could also add an AKS cluster inside that subscription to run the BOM build instead of AWS or to move elements, or if DigitalOcean doesn't renew, for instance. So we need to set up that subscription, which is under my name with the credits now. I need to add everyone as co-admin, and then we should start adding uh, that management inside the Terraform project so we can create what is required to host these virtual machines and eventually clusters. Any question, clarification? Well, so there is a question from Michelle Martineau that arrived during this meeting mm -hmm. that you'll get to get to answer in terms of how we handle it. And there's a question from a person at Microsoft on that thread that mm -hmm. hints to me, maybe they've got a better way to do it. If they've got a better way, we're open to a better way. But I think your approach here is the exact right thing to do. This, this yep. feels like the right thing to do based on all that we know about the risks of the alternatives. Yeah, I see the email. I believe both of them haven't read my previous email. That's why they're asking this question. So yeah, but thanks. Okay, a good well, well, and and did probably did not, if they read it, did not comprehend it. And, yep. and that's, that's what that's, I saw in yeah. the reading of my mail message. Yes, asked back a, con a confirming question. Does that mean this? And so I'll give them a response to mine as well. Yes, that's what I meant. Absolutely. I might have only sent the email to the board and a few person that might be the explanation. But yeah, they could have, I could have been too much technical on my answer. So I'm, I'm going to answer to them. But yeah, the answer is okay. let's get started with this. And that's prior, prior because the goal is to decrease November uh, as you're being. Any question? No. One last item. It's the Scaleway sponsorship. I've edited the title of an old issue, which was related to how the Kubernetes cluster on Scaleway for CI Jenkins IO. So Stefan, I've uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna assign this to oh no. I, I click misclicked. Since you are in contact with uh, people at Scaleway. Um, the oh, goal yeah. is to track. We have to add Bruno also because he also has someone and he sent an email also. We had the, the two of cool. us have uh, contact in there. Okay, I need. Yeah. Okay, I'm assigning this and you will <laughs> take care of the it. Step. Uh, okay. So the goal is to start the discussion with them to see uh, how much, in which form, is it still. Uh, uh, we had a comment from Hervé about yeah, uh, 2.400. So even if it's one or two machine, that could be an alternative for a mirror for update center or moving archive to Kinsayo, I don't know. But yeah, the goal is to apply to the open source program and see the next step. I've added that 
issue because it's open, so that will help us to track the work on that part. Is that okay for you, Stefan? Yes, it's perfect. Thank you. Cool. I don't have new issues. Um, I don't think we have something on the backlog to look on. We have cyber bits. Eventually, Hervé, you wanted to delay that issue. Is it still in the backlog, or do you want to add it for this week? How do you feel? Wait. Um, I, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's yeah. not no, add no. it. If I, I don't know means a no for me. Uh, no yeah. pressure, no stress. Uh, okay, uh, I don't see other issues. Do you have another topic you want to bring either on the milestone or to the discussion? Two, three, okay. So I'm stopping my screen share. So I'm gonna stop recording. Uh, so for people watching us, see you next bye -bye. week. Bye bye. Bye.